Welcome to the first in a series of guides for the XPS controller. We are excited with your purchase of the XPS controller as you start your discovery on how effective this product can be for your application. The goal of this quick start video guide is to provide an easy to follow guide to set up the XPS motion controller. The essential details of setting up the XPS motion controller are divided into five sections. With the purchase of your XPS controller, you will be receiving a quick start guide that will describe all the details about communications and configuration of the stages with your controller, a user's manual and a motion tutorial describing some details about motion and controller itself, a power cable, two ethernet cables, the gray one is a cross-wired cable which you would need for the communication to the controller directly using a computer and a regular RJ45 for communication through the network with this controller. These cards will make it possible for you to communicate with your stages through the controller. Please verify that every stage that you have purchased is compatible with the card that you will be using. On the back side of the controller, we have the power button and the power connector. We have the GPIO, general purpose input output, and the trigger in for triggering external devices. We have the inhibit connector for connecting the mushroom buttons to it for safety. We have the encoder connectors, which will define the type of the controller that you have purchased. It could be a C2, meaning that you have two encoders, C4, four encoders, C6 and C8. We also have a CPU card in the controller which will do the process for you and also take care of the communication. On the communication port, we have Ethernet communication through remote and host. On the front side of the controller, we have the stop all button. We do have a connector for the remote control, which you can connect the remote control if you have purchased that unit as well. At this point, we will be setting up the hardware to communicate to our stages. Before doing so, we would need to make sure that our driver cards are what is specified in the catalog or on our website regarding the same stages that they will be connected to. You can also verify that by contacting our technical support. You will be repeating this based on the number of the cards and the access that you have connected to the controller. After you have connected all of your driver cards to the XPS, we would need to connect the cables to the controller. Based on the setup that you have on the stages, you would have access 1 through 8 or for this case we have 1 through 5. Our first access is an XPS DRV02 to control the XM S160 which is a linear motor. For these linear motors, we do have three cables that we would need to connect. One is the motor, one is the limits or the end of runs, and one is the encoder. About the linear motors, we have to make sure the encoder is connected to the same plug number as the card is connected to. For instance, here we are connecting the linear motor to driver one. The encoder has to be number one, and for our second linear motor that is plugged into number five the encoder has to be chosen as number five i will be connecting the stages and show exactly what i mean so we're connecting the encoder encoder number one end of run and the motor
The second axis that you have here is a DC motor. So it has a regular 25 pin cable to be connected to XPS-DRV01. As you might have noticed, we did not connect any encoder cables for axis number 2, 3 and 4. And we have only used the 25 pin cable to connect to the XPS-DRV01. The reason for that is we are using stepper and DC brush motors and all the encoder signals will be passed through the same cable as we have for the 25 pin and there's no need to connect any encoder cables to the other encoders on the controller. For being able to communicate with the controller, we have two means, which are the two Ethernet connections on the back side of the controller, one being the remote, second one being the host. The IP address on these connections by default are for the host 192.168.0.254 and for the remote connection the default IP address is 192.168.254.254 We would need to connect the crossover cable that was in the material that you have received directly to either one of these connectors and talk to the controller. For the time being, we will be using the host connector with the address of 192.168.0.254 and for being able to do this, we would need to change the IP address on the computer as well, which we will be showing you how to do that. We will be clicking on Start, Control Panel, network connections, local area connections, and we have to make sure that you have internet protocol TCP IP installed on your computer. If it is not installed, you can click on install and have that installed for you. If you have it installed, you just click it and then click on properties. In the TCP IP window, by default, obtain an IP address automatically will be checked. We would need to uncheck that and click on use the following IP address. For the IP address, since we are talking to the host connector of the controller, we would need to have 192.168.0.100. Please make a note that this, the last number, 100, cannot be typed in as 254 because 254 is the IP address that the controller is using by default. For the subnet mask, we would need to leave it as default, which is going to be 255, 255, 255, 0. After this, we would need to click on OK, and we will close this window. In your address bar, you will be typing http colon slash slash 192.168.0.254. Because we are connecting to the controller through the host. The web based graphical user interface of the XPS will pop up when your browser finds the controller. On this screen, you would need to log in. There are two types of users for the XPS controller as administrator and as user. Administrator will have the ability and the rights to set up the stages and do modifications on the configuration while the user will be able to just move whatever is set up by an admin. Since we are talking to the controller for the first time and we want to do configuration on the controller, we will be using the administrative rights. The username and the password as default for the XPS controller is administrator with capitalized A. And for the rights, we use administrator and we click enter.